I was not even in the street. He was in a house that I visited a friend when the police came. And they control us of my husbands, which I give them in paper I have. And they control everything. And that was why, that is how they took me to a station and which they told me that they would not let me go. And I asked why. And they told me because they have been looking for me because my salon has been finished here. So they took me from there to the petition camp, which I also did the hunger strike. Five days hunger strike that I have never did in my life since I was born. I was brought, bring it, I was brought to the doctor in the petition camp. And they tested my sugar around to 41, which I actually know that my life is on risk. So, but the doctor, he told me that he cannot release me because I will be deported. I will advise me to stop the hunger strike, or if I don't stop, I will remain there with a prison, a hospital prison, or I don't know what to call it. I cannot go out from the room. I cannot have conversation with people, you know, but I will be there. So, which I told the doctor, I am not going to stop. And I spent two days there, and actually, I didn't like the system. I preferred the deportation camp. And after two days, I told the doctor, okay, I would like to eat something, you know. Top day, they took me back to the deportation camp. After some months, they took me to the flu cafe. At the time, I told them that, that I don't want to go to the plane. They beat a helmet out of me. They broke my hand, blow my mouth, even draw my penis, my private part. You can see my hand here now. I'm a little bit disabled in my hand. It was in the flu caffeine police. It wasn't the police that took me from the deportation camp. It was the flu caffeine police that broke my hand, my finger here. St today, I still have that pain. The first time they were to take that deportation was not possible. It, it didn't work out because of the problem I make with them. They brought me back to the deportation camp. A week later, that was when they succeed of the deportation. I was not having choice than the Austria police forced me into the flight with handcuffs in my hand and with my broken hand and my swelling face. So that is how it happened. The first time they tried me, they told me that uh, it's a passenger plane flight. If I want to go, nobody will know that I go for deportation. The Nigerian authority will not know. I know the police will try to deceive me, and which it did not work. So the second time, which they succeeded off, it was a mass deportation to Italy. So from Italy, we use an Italian airline direct to Lagos. And we brought to Lagos. And the following day, and I was in the streets, trying to speak with people. And that first day was too miserable for me that I would not love to say something about that. Because I remember that day I slept on the street, under the bridge. There was no place for me to sleep. Is that not too hard to believe in my whole country? That was in Lagos. So I don't really want to go to detail about that. If not, maybe the next few days, I may not find sleep again. And I don't want to face those things again. I was in, in the football training pitch on Monday, on Thursday. When I was in the football pitch, I did not know that there are so many policemen, almost 100 of them, in the police, in the football team. After getting there, we were just like training in the morning. We started seeing some police vehicle coming, 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 coming. We stopped the training force. We thought maybe they are not coming to our side without knowing they are coming where we are training. They want to control, everybody should go in, in the cabinet or something like that to go and bring their horse vice. That is how they hold me and they hold some one of other Sampapi player. Before I got to know, they take the handcuff, hand 
and I put it in my hand. Now put me into their vehicle. And I take me to Osawe Land. I didn't believe that something like that will happen to me. And there is a man, again, a Nigerian man. That man is working with the Australian people. He was the one that normally come to come and deceive Nigerians in Osawe Land. If they will ask you, sign some paper. If you sign that paper, you don't know that you have signed, you have agreed that they will take you back to Nigeria. From the Osawe Land, because the car is inside the Osawe Land building. So they bring me out. They put me, maybe to me and other three people in the vehicle. I didn't know how outside look like. It is when I get to the airport, that is when they were just like saying they were doing demonstration. The, the demonstration was going on because of these two players. They said they, they, the, the demonstration, they block the road, they don't want to let the police go to pass or to take us, but me, I did not see. This is what I heard. I was inside the vehicle. And on our, on our way going to the airport, I did not see, how will I put it, I did not even know the direction they even take me, and I didn't even know when I get into the flight. You understand? By then I'm injured with bandage, full of bandage. They did not treat me, they did not do anything. They put me into the airport, into the plane. Each each person have one police. You don't have. You can, for example, now I'm sitting here. A policeman is sitting here. Next person is sitting at my back. Policeman will sit here, and the person will sit here. That is how the whole plane was full up with police. How can you talk to somebody? They beat one guy. They beat him to. They injured him because he refused. That is not going anywhere back here in Nigeria, and my passport was taken away from the Nigerian. I don't know, maybe it's police or whatever. And they asked me to pay money that if I don't give them money in that place in the airport, they are going to take me to prison. So, what will I do? I have to give them the 200 euros. So, I am everything about me empty. That is how I'm free.